In this video, I will present my favorite historical TV shows. I wanted to make a top 10 list, but then I realized I have too many favorites, so it will be a uh, top 15. Oh, and I also had to exclude miniseries and limited series, so there will be no White Queen, Wolf Hole, Maximilian, because those will have their own list. And I also realized I am unable to rank the shows from number 1 favorite to number 15, so I will talk about them in chronological order. So the first is set in the ancient times and the last is set in the 20th century and like that. The first one is Rome. This TV show had two seasons. It is set in the Roman Empire, in the city of Rome basically. From Julius Caesar's rise to power to the fight between Mark Antony and Octavian. They follow the lives of the main political figures of this era and the family, but we also follow the adventures of two commoners in Rome. All in all, it's a very high rated series. It has an exciting plot, a lot of violence, naturalistic depictions of the lives of the rich and the poor. I think this was one of the first historical TV shows that I have ever watched and it was one of the first ones really that made me very interested in this genre. You will find if you consult the priests, the wife takes precedence. I don't give a fuck what the priests say. Why not let a vicious little trollop like you walk ahead of me? Vikings is one of the most popular historical series ever made many people compare it to Game of Thrones. It's about the beginning of the Viking Golden Age, about the legendary Viking hero Ragnar Lodbrok and his famous sons. The show is set in many different locations, so not only Scandinavia, but also England, France, the Mediterranean, Iceland and the Kieran, Rusland. I think that during season 3 and 4 it was really my favorite TV show. Power is always dangerous. It attracts the worst and corrupts the best. The Last Kingdom is very similar to Vikings, but its only location is England. It is set during the Viking occupation of England. The protagonist is a semi-historical, semi-fictional hero, Ustred, and there are many historical figures among the main characters, like Alfred the Great and Ethelfred of Mercia. I think it's one of those TV shows that get better with each season. Season 1 was mm, okay, and then season 2 and 3 got better and better. You can find it on Netflix. I, Utrecht of Bourbon. It is the custom to kneel. Empress Key is the only Korean series I have watched so far, but god now I understand why many people are so crazy about K-dramas. It has a gripping story that evolves around an intriguing love triangle and a very interesting heroine. The protagonist is Empress Key, Sung Yang, who was born in Goryeo and later became a very powerful and influential empress of the Yuan dynasty. The show includes many fictional elements, especially about Empress Key's life, but it's worth watching, really. Medici is an Italian-British TV show set in Florence during the Italian Renaissance in the 15th century. We see how the Medici Banco family established their power and rule in Florence. Season 1 is about Cosimo de Medici, played by Richard Madden, and season 2 and 3 are about the family's most famous member, Lorenzo the Magnificent. Despite some major inaccuracies, especially in the chronology of the event, I love how the show recreates the amazing Renaissance atmosphere and how we see the most important artists of the era during work. You think noble blood entitles you to rule the world? Not anymore. Florence cannot go back into the past where nobles ruled and peasants bowed. Isabel is a Spanish TV show about Isabel the Catholic, Queen of Castile, and it is one of my biggest favorites. It recreates Isabella's life very accurately. It shows her world in portrait together with her husband, Ferdinand of Aragon, like the Reconquista, Columbus's voyage to America, etc. It has three seasons and it was a very successful TV show in Spain. It won many, many awards. 
I think that the performance of the actors is especially outstanding, even supporting characters delivered very, very great performances. Entonces aprenderá algo muy importante. Él mandará en Aragón, pero quien manda en Castilla soy yo. The Borges, I mean the 2011 Showtime series with Jeremy Irons as the protagonist, is also set in Renaissance era Italy and it follows the notorious Borgia family. We see the lives of the scandalous Borgia family members during Alexander VI's time as Pope. While we are often shocked by their deeds, every character has a likeable side too. Oh, and the costumes are especially breathtaking. If I was a man, I would have run him through. I would have cut out his tongue before I let him speak about my own sister in this way. It was for the good of the family. We had no choice. You had every choice! Carlos Reemparador is a Spanish series sequel to Isabel. It's about Isabella's grandson, Charles V's Holy Roman Emperor and King of Spain. Depicting not only Charles, but also most of the important political figures of the era, it is set on many, many locations, not just Spain, but France, England, the Netherlands, the Holy Roman Empire, Italy, Portugal, and the newly discovered American lands. With its many locations, characters, and the endless political schemes for the power in Europe, it is a bit like a historical Game of Thrones. I loved this show very very much. My only complaint about it is that its 17 episodes are far from enough to depict Chassis Long and Ivan Fure. ¿Veis posible el acuerdo? ¿Veis posible cumplirlo? The Tudors is the most famous TV show on this list, I think. It is about the reign of the infamous Harry VIII. Although it has some disturbing inaccuracies, it shows the most important events of Harry's reign and it also shows his private life with his six wives. The show was successful with the critics too, it won many awards, Jonathan Rhys Myers was very good as Harry and Natalie Dormer had her breakthrough role in this TV show as Anne Boleyn. Oh man. Because I know how it goes otherwise. My sister is called the Great Prostitute by everyone. Magnificent Century is a Turkish TV series about the reign of Suleiman the Magnificent, one of the greatest sultans of the Ottoman Empire. It shows Suleiman's military conquests, the complex internal politics of the empire, and the great amount of screen time is spent in the sultan's harem. It has gained international popularity, it has been broadcast in more than 50 countries of the world, but if you want to watch it, you will need a lot of time because it is a very long series with more than 100 episodes. Suleiman. Rain is kinda the odd one out series on this list. It is a guilty pleasure historical TV show, at least for me, because it is very, very inaccurate historically. Well, it doesn't even try to be accurate. It was made by the CW American TV channel for a CW audience, so a very young teenage audience. I actually like the idea that the TV show was made about May Stewart's teenage years in France because every production about her starts with her arrival in Scotland already. So I enjoyed it with all its inaccuracies and Megan follows as Catherine de Medici is glorious. You do realize that we could all be dead. My children, slaughtered. And all because you couldn't stand being lonely in your role as queen, as wife. That's the job, Mary. Get used to it. Versailles is a French-Canadian TV series about Louis XIV and the son king of France. The show has three seasons and it depicts Louis' younger years as he builds his absolute reign and gains more and more power and he constructs the Palace of Versailles. Besides Louis' politics and ambitions, the series focuses on his relationship with his brother Philippe and his several affairs with the ladies of the court. This show also has its fair share of historical inaccuracies, but the sets and the costumes are marvelous. What palace? That one. Our father's hunting lodge. Versailles.
Yekaterina is a Russian TV series about Catherine the Great. It currently has three seasons and it follows Catherine's life from her arrival to Russia as a teenager through her rise to power to becoming one of the greatest rulers Russia has ever had. It is a very honest portrayal of Catherine with all the good and bad she had done, portrayed wonderfully by Marina Alexandrova. The good news is that it is available with English subtitles on Amazon Prime. Может начаться война. Выдвигать жесткие требования – признак силы. А принимать подарки после набегов и разорения русских сел и городов – признак слабости. Сильных уважают. Слабые провоцируют на то, чтобы их били и грабили. Victoria is a British TV show about young Queen Victoria. It follows the early years of her reign as she learns how to be a monarch and she chooses her husband, Prince Albert. We also see the lives of other people in the palace, including the nobles and the servants downstairs. The series also gives a very accurate portrayal of the most important industrial and political changes worldwide in this dynamic era and how Victoria and her country adapt to it. I like this show especially for the chemistry between Victoria and Albert. I think the casting was very good. I am so happy about the baby. I'm happy too. The Crown is the last show on this list, but I think this may be the most acclaimed and it is also the most expensive and maybe this is the most accurate historically. It is a Netflix series about the reign of Queen Elizabeth II. In the show we get to see the Queen's private life, the way she gets accustomed to her role as monarch from a very young age. And we also see the most important events worldwide. There was a cast change after two seasons and I read that many people complained that it was not the same without the original cast. But I don't know, I have no problem with it and I am looking forward to season 4. No, it is not my job. To govern, but it is my job to ensure proper governance. But how can I do that if my ministers lie and plot and hide the truth from me? You have prevented me from doing my duty.